ahí con el dolor en mi corazón, yo dije, lo acepto. Me tengo que ir. Yo sabía que estaba tomando una decisión fuerte, sabía que me iba a ir sola, sabía que dejaba a todo el mundo, pero yo también tenía que pensar en mí. Yo también tenía que salirme de lo que era mi zona de confort por la gente que me rodeaba, ¿me entiendes? Ahí tomé la decisión, llené todos los documentos, esperé el día el tiempo para que, ese, para que ese cuarto estuviera disponible y entonces saqué el pasaje. Y no fue fácil. Era, estaba sola, era... Soy una chica en la que terminé su estudio, solamente quiere, solamente quiere crecer profesional y personalmente y no sabía cómo lo iba a hacer, pero lo iba a hacer. Ya cuando yo ya, ya yo había llegado, empecé, pues, no tenía carro ni nada, empecé a caminar, a buscar el sitio, llego aquí, en donde me dan una orientación, conozco ahí a Rosa, que yo es donde cualquier sitio que voy digo que ese es mi ángel, porque esa fue durante, durante los meses que no estuve trabajando, que estuve esperando una buena oportunidad, esa fue mi backup. Yo venía aquí semanalmente, bajo tormenta de nieve, bajo lo que fuera, pero venía caminando, me reuniaba con ella, este, practicaba mi inglés, este, bu ella buscaba una persona para que me hiciera entrevistas para practicar el inglés, arreglamos el resumen, hasta que por fin, un día se nos dio la oportunidad para yo este, hacer una entrevista, en donde ahora mismo estoy trabajando, que es Victory Home Health Care, yo les pido que por favor vamos a parar un momento porque tenemos un torbellino de emociones y si no paramos y pensamos qué es lo que yo necesito en este momento y que yo como consejera puedo hacer para ayudarlos a ellos y qué servicios están disponibles para que yo los pueda dirigir y les dejo saber a ellos siempre, no tengo todas las, las contestaciones porque yo me gusta que ellos vean una persona que también es humana, no porque yo estoy aquí sentado lo sé todo. Yo busco ayuda, a mí no me da vergüenza pedir ayuda a todo el mundo. Trato de conectarlos con experiencias pasadas que yo he tenido y dejarles saber que mucha gente se sienta ahí y no tiene A, B, C, D, no, no, tiene, no, los, no tienen dinero, no tienen para pagar apartamento y poco a poco vamos a crear un plan y vamos a llegar. Actually, we were pretty fortunate in that we were already 60% bilingual and 55% bicultural because we work in Holyoke and we represent the community we work in. Uh, the bigger issue was that everyone had jobs, full-time jobs to begin with, so kind of piling this on top, we had to do a whole bunch of reorganizing. Obviously, the bilingual staff had to take on different roles, which meant the non-bilingual staff had to take on different roles. So everybody here got asked to do more than they were doing before. Um, this is a pretty good place and nobody complained about that. Everyone was volunteering to do more. Um, now, seven months later, I'm still trying to get them to keep their work-life balance because they're just 100% committed to it. One of the first things that we tell people when they start working here is our customers are our first priority, definitely. And um, customers meaning businesses, job seekers, anyone that walks through our door is our customer. And we taught, we, we really encourage people to treat them like they're the only person standing in front of them. They're the most important person at the moment. You, we know that a lot of people come here with challenges and barriers and we have to make them feel welcome and you know, just let them know that it's gonna be okay. We, we, we can help you, guide you through the system to figure out you know, what it is that you need and how to get there. He's only 16, well. 15, okay, so that, um, if we're gonna go through 16, he needs to go through a youth program here. Um, I can, if you give me his information, I can connect them with him and I can make sure they get back to him. My life kind of took a change when I moved over here, so I still wanna pursue my nursing career. I would love to be um, a registered nurse soon, um, a nurse practitioner in the future. Um, but overall, this field has been something I've been passionate about. I told Betty about this many times and she said, why did you become a nurse? <laughs> um, um, but she, she showed me that I can do both um, and just decide throughout, because like they say when you get into college, this is not something you're, if you love to do a certain type of job, you should just pursue it. And I'm just still on the fence about that. I still want to become a nurse. I still want to help people out. Um, but I also want my community to have somebody like me and just guide them through what's going on. Before I left here the Friday before October 16th, 
I sent out an email and I said, we start Tuesday morning. And on Tuesday morning, 12 organizations were here with their laptops, their staff, um, their uh, paño de mesa, ¿verdad? because we want to treat people with respect and also be clear about identifying each of us. Um, and people were here. And then the banks came because if you were in Puerto Rico receiving Social Security and you needed to do a direct deposit, well, now you have to transfer banks, ¿verdad? Um, all of that took place here. It was amazing. We had anticipated that there would be an uptick of arrivals coming to Holyoke even before we saw some of the first people arrive. Betty and I had a few conversations and this was right around the time that they became a family resource center for, um, for the Commonwealth. And uh, to Betty's credit, we had a, a good conversation about, you know, she wanted to convene some folks, but she knew that it would really take leadership from, from this office and, and for me to be able to convene all of our city partners and emphasize the importance of bringing everyone together to prepare for the migration of folks coming to Holyoke. As far as I know, we were the first city in the Commonwealth to be able to have some sort of coordinated effort. So we, we designated in Lasse as the official welcome center for the city. And every day from 12 to 2, they would do a welcome orientation that would include Career Point and, and Lasse. And um, we had folks from the public schools there, enrolling students, um, <clears throat> everything from employment to health care. Prescriptions were a huge um, issue at the time, so the health center really stepped up and they were providing prescriptions for folks. Um, even if they didn't have their records, like telling them, hey, I have diabetes or I have asthma or hypertension, whatever, whatever it may be. Some of the little things we can do and the bigger things we can do are all rooted in that vision of how we can make this transition as, as safe, comfortable, and um, sort of successful as possible for individuals and families that are, that are coming here. These families come with children or youth themselves and um, got involved with what the Holyoke Public Schools were looking at doing. Um, us, uh, in my department, helping the youth to feel welcome in the city of Holyoke by uh, providing them with information and, and resources that we have for the youth department because I believe that it's, it's a very, it, not only have they gone through trauma, but it's a, it's a cultural shock to just come to a community that you probably didn't make a choice as a youth. I came here by not by choice at once, I remember, and it was a cultural shock, meaning my mother made that decision. Here in this case, families did a decision for the best interest of their children. Most of them say, I came here because the education is not gonna work because of what's happening due to the hurricane. Um, we are not able to work to provide and feed our children. We're here because of them. We're here because health conditions issues. We're here because we're, we're um, dislocated, meaning by housing uh, situation that we're facing there. And um, I felt that supporting these youth, the families will feel comfortable to understand this may be my place to stay or maybe temporarily. And right now, as we're running the summer youth program, we have some numbers of youth from uh, the island that are here and who will be working and very fearful of what awaits for them in the future, even with this placement. But they're, re they're receiving 100% uh, support from all of us in a sense of making them feel comfortable working in an organization that it could be bilingual, working with organizations that could be at least someone who's going to mentor them and it's going to help them move forward so they're not left behind or they're not left like I am not going to have no type of support. This is an extraordinary place with extraordinary people and I'm, I'm fortunate that we got this opportunity. I wish it didn't come with such pain and cost but I'm glad it landed here and I'm glad we got to be a part of the answer. We're never the answer to anything but we're part of the answer to everything. I think September 20 just changed the lives of many, many people. Uh, obviously the people that were on the island were truly affected, but the people here had so much uncertainty and we didn't know for weeks at a time how was our family, if they were okay, did they have food, where, did they have water, did they have the medical needs that being met. So we were coming to work doing our day-to-day -day things, but our minds were also 
in Puerto Rico with our families not knowing what was happening with them. We have a philosophy. We don't hire people, we hire families. And that showed through during this disaster. We were very fortunate enough to have a management team that supports us and because half of the staff at Career Point are Puerto Rican or have family in Puerto Rico, we, um, we were able to be ourselves and if we needed time to take care of ourselves and figure out, you know, how is my family. Julio me abrió las puertas, este, me ayuda a conseguir mi primer empleo, he conocido gente, so me te puedo decir que sí, que me siento bien, me siento esperanzada y me siento feliz. Y sé que a lo mejor en un momento dado de desesperación, de soledad, pensé si realmente yo había hecho lo correcto. Y ahora aquí, como quien dice, estoy más encaminada, te puedo decir con exactitud que sí. Que el proceso no ha sido fácil, pero que voy por un buen camino. <risa>